Hello, I'm Judah Sher, an application engineer here at Go Engineer. The other day, a friend of mine came to me with a big bump on his head, asking me if I could help him with his baby bottle problem. He's a first-time parent, and one day, while he was rushing to feed his kid, the bottle tipped over and rolled off the counter. When he bent over to pick it up, he rushed and bumped his head. Apparently, this was also not the first time this had happened, so he decided to come to me and ask me if I could design something that would help. The reason the bottle kept falling over was it was made of a soft rubber and had a rounded bottom. This made it great for holding, but not so great at staying upright unless it was set down very carefully, which is something a frazzled parent is unlikely to do. My friend didn't really want to get new bottles, so he was hoping I could design some sort of stand that would catch the bottle if it was carelessly set down. Now this is going to be a pretty fast project, so I thought it might be fun to show you the entire process from start to finish. Now the first step is going to be scanning the bottle with the PL3 scanner from Creaform. So this is the parameters screen in PLOS where we tell the software things like how big the object is, how much detail we want, what kind of output, and if we want color or not. Now you can also expand the advanced parameters to fine tune these settings as well. But let's get started. So we will hit start scanning on the scanner, make sure we're nice and registered. Then we'll zoom in on the bottle so we can see what we're doing a little better. And then we will start to turn the turntable to get the different sides of the bottle. Now the surface texture is a little wrinkly because it is translucent, but I'm not too worried about that. Now the top is starting to look especially bad. I'll scan that a little bit more, but also finalize will take care of that. Next, we're going to clean up this scan data. So first step is to remove the background by establishing a clipping plane using these three targets. All the red stuff will go away, click continue. Then to get rid of all of this noise, we'll use our select connected tool, click on the part we want to keep, make sure we have everything, choose keep only, and boom. Now that we're in the align step, the scan data has been finalized, and we can see that the top has been cleaned up nicely. We have some texture on the side, but that's not too concerning since we're just taking a simple cross section. However, we do want to align the center of it with our y-axis. So we will map a cylinder to the average of this scan data, and that should do a pretty nice job. We'll lock that and export it for the next step. So now that we're in peel.cad, all we really need to do is get a nice clean cross section. So let's find a nice area to do that. Use the cross section tool. Let's choose our plane, which is going to be one of our vertical planes. So XZ in this case. Make sure that we have a nice clean cross section, which we do, and hit OK. The next step is to switch over to SolidWorks and just open up an empty part file. Once we've done that, we can switch back to peel.cad, cancel out of our cross-section tool, and just choose that cross-section and transfer it to SolidWorks. Now that we're in SolidWorks, you can see that that cross-section has come through on our top plane. So we will make a new sketch on our top plane, but before we start drawing, let's orient this properly. So right now the cup is facing down, we want to face up, so we'll switch our view here and then go ahead and get ourselves a nice normal view to the sketch plane so we can start sketching. My idea is to make a ring-shaped stand for this with a flared opening at the top and a nice sloped side. So I'm going to use a three-point arc here just to make a nice curve for that side. Give it a nice flat bottom, of course. And then, in order to match the curvature of the bottle well, I'm actually going to use my spline tool, so I have a lot of control over that cross-section. So first I'm going to move this, maybe adjust the slope angle a bit so it's tangent where it hits the side of the bottle there. Then I'll go ahead and use my spline tool to go ahead and connect those two points. And then adjust the curvature so that they match nicely with my cross-section. Now that my spline looks good, I'm going to lock it down so it doesn't change shape on me. 
before adding a nice tangent sheath constraint with the side there so the curvature is nice and continuous. Finally, I'm going to add a sketch dimension just to lock down the radius, give it a nice even number, and then adjust the side curve a bit before calling it done. Oh, I realized I forgot to add a very important feature, and that is going to be my axis of revolution. So I'll snap a quick vertical line to my origin there, and make sure that it's a construction line so my revolve feature will pick it up. And then, of course, I'm going to actually make my revolve feature. Select my sketch, it chooses that construction line as the axis automatically, and there's my revolve. Now you can see the design I had in mind. It has a hole in the center to allow liquids to fall through. Now I think the only thing that this needs is a fillet operation to go ahead and soften those sharp corners. So I think a nice three millimeter radius will do nicely on all of those edges. And there we go, a nice smooth shape. That should do its job nicely. For our last step, we're going to use GrabCAD Print to set up our model for printing. Now we will check our model settings. We can use a sparse infill style because this is not going to be stood upon. It just needs to hold its shape nicely. So 22% infill density will work fine. Now we'll simply do a slice preview. So this part will start out with a raft of support, just like all prints, and then it will print by itself with a nice sparse infill and thick walls. So that will print rather nicely, and the support should be able to be peeled right off. Now we'll just send it to the printer. As you can see, the new stand works fantastic. You can practically toss the bottle in, and it doesn't go anywhere. And there you have it. Idea to final design in less than 10 minutes. Now, did I need to use a 3D scanner to design this? Of course not. There are lots of ways I could have designed this stand, but they would either have not fit as well, or they would have taken a lot more time. So what'd you think of the video? Did you like seeing the whole process from start to finish? Or would you have preferred a deeper dive into just one part? I'd love to hear your feedback, so please leave a comment down below. It helps me out a lot. As always, be sure to visit GoEngineer.com for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. Catch you later.